on today's episode, Did Germany Get It Wrong on Clean Energy? Today's episode of End of the Line is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.tv today. Even the most diehard climate change deniers, well, they have to concede one point. Fossil fuels for grid-scale electrical generation, well, they're going away. Now, the Paris Accords and a shift in the overall social climate has made CO2 reduction a political necessity in Europe and Asia, and it's fast becoming that way in America, too. Now, there's a lot of argument on how much government should get involved in any transition, however. Now, it's no surprise that I've always advocated market-driven solutions that involve advanced technology to mass-produce alternates that deliver energy to consumers at lower prices than fossil fuels, well, because this makes the issue go away by itself. In Germany, however, where the green movement is particularly strong, governments there have gone in a different direction. The Germans call it the Energiewende, a program that touches every aspect of power generation in Germany. The program uses feed-in tariffs for renewables, R&D credits and loan programs, targeted infrastructure programs, support for workers disrupted by the transition, and most controversially, a surcharge on electricity bills to pay the difference between the feed-in tariffs paid to renewable suppliers and the market price for electricity. Now, in 2019, the most recent pre-COVID data available, that surcharge was $31 billion. For German households, not only did they have to foot that bill, but they also covered the cost for industry, who are exempt from much of that additional cost as the German government quite sensibly realized that the results could have been a flight of German manufacturing to neighboring jurisdictions, where cheap energy is an important factor in attracting investment. Now, the bottom line for residential consumers in Germany are electricity rates three times the US average. And here's where it gets interesting. Now, the Germans have been at this for 20 years, but if you take a representative time period like 1990 to say 2019, the percentage reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and power generation between the US with no notable government intervention in the market and Germany is the same at about 35%. So how did the SUV driving, energy wasting, climate change denying United States of America match the greenhouse gas emissions reductions of Europe's most eco-friendly industrial state without major government intervention? Well, like everything else in the highly distorted world of green politics, it depends on who you ask. Now, the American energy industry cites the rise in natural gas as a coal replacement, the maintenance of nuclear power, and natural market forces driving improved energy efficiency in both industry and in the household. Now, on the left, groups like the Center for Strategic and International Studies, well, they cite the deindustrialization of America and Germany's abandonment of nuclear power, which otherwise would have resulted in even better reduction figures there. But however you rationalize it, the reality is that German consumers pay three times the rates that American consumers do for electric power, and the result is greenhouse gas reduction rates no better than the US. So what's the takeaway? Well, for me, it's that advanced manufacturing technology progressively lowers the cost of alternates like photovoltaics and battery storage, and that means it's simply becoming cheaper to buy clean power than fossil fuel-derived power. Now, this is a natural consequence of both market economics and manufacturing itself, which progressively optimizes all production processes, especially in environments not crushed by regulation. Now, German consumers, they paid a very high price for those reductions. Americans have not. Both sides are declaring victory, but down here at street level, the win comes when my monthly power bill arrives and it's lower. Now, advanced manufacturing can make that happen with green energy, but I suspect it will be in spite of government, not because of it. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit Engineering.tv for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.